have Bowling Green State University. And there's hundreds of organizations that students can come and get help with, whether it be sports or homework. And in this case, it's homework, making a video about physics. I'm here at the Pi Kappa Phi, and we're going to show how one of their pastimes of playing pool can be brought into the physics classroom. The two balls we're about to look at both have the same mass. We should see them both travel at the same velocity. Now let's look at that again. This time I'll slow it down even more so we can really see that they have the same velocities. Now when we start talking about physics that involves the billiards table, what we get into is the conservation of momentum, conservation of angular momentum, whether the, whether the collision is elastic or inelastic. In this, in this uh, situation, we're going to see it as being elastic. And elastic means that you have a conservation of kinetic energy and you have a conservation of momentum. Now, if we start looking at it on a very atomic scale, you can start to see that you know, a lot of things are not perfectly conserved. Because what I mean by that is that your like, momentum at the beginning is not exactly the momentum at the end because you have things lost by heat, etc. But on this case, these balls are very rigid. So anything that is lost is very, very minuscule as far as heat when they collide. Okay, when you have ball A hit ball B, ball B will take off the same velocity that ball A had and going in the same direction. Now because it goes off at the same velocity, and if it, had, if it goes in the same velocity and it has the same uh, mass, then they, have this, then they also have the same momentum. Okay, but what if this ball, being the cue ball, is actually heavier? which it is in billiards. If this ball comes at this uh, at one of the numbered balls, then the numbered ball takes off. Is the numbered ball, as a lighter ball, going slower or faster than the cue ball? Well, our calculations are going to show that today, and we're also going to see that the conservation is, that the momentum is conserved. We're not going to go so much into the kinetic energy. I just want you to understand that it is there, OK? Well, to start, I'll give you some equations. You have momentum is equal to mass times velocity. You have kinetic energy is equal to mass, one half, mass times velocity squared. Okay? So right now, we're not going to worry about kinetic energy. Today, all we're worried about is momentum. Now, the momentum on this ball, we have momentum on this ball. And they're going to be equal to each other. I'm just going to transfer that momentum from one to the next. Okay? Now we know that the cue ball, this white or grayish looking one right here, it has a mass of 0.26 kilograms. This other ball it has a mass 0.15 kilograms. Okay? Now we know the most about the first ball. We're going to say it's going 5 meters per second. Okay? Which is a little over 11 miles an hour. And we're going to find its momentum. Okay? So we say momentum is equal to mass times velocity, which is equal to 0.26 kilograms times 5 meters per second. And we get out our calculator. And we will say that 0 0.26 times 5 meters per second is 1.3. So we know that this goes at 1.3 kilogram meters 
per second. Okay? Now what about our other ball? We know that this is momentum. We just found this is this one's momentum. And we know that if momentum is conserved, the second ball would have the same momentum. So we can say that the second ball is 1.3 kilogram meters per second is equal to its mass of 0 0.15 kilograms times velocity. Okay, so then we'll, we'll move this equation around a little bit, and we will say that velocity is equal to 1.3 kilogram meters per second divided by 0 0.15 kilograms. So then we'll find our velocity, velocity to be divided by 0 0.15, 8.66 repeating, 8.66 meters per second. Okay, so then we can see here that this is our velocity for one, and this is our velocity for the other one. The heavier ball had a velocity of five meters per second. The lighter ball came out with a velocity of 8.66 meters per second. So whatever the cue ball hits, that second ball is actually going faster. And that makes sense, right, from our equation here. As the mass goes up, the velocity has to go down. They're inverse relationship. And that is our physics behind, that is our basic physics behind billiards. Alright, in our local community, it's a college campus, and there's a lot of fraternities, sororities, and some of the things that they do to pass their time is pool. And pool is a great way to talk about physics. Let's scratch that. Yeah. That's not <laughs> that was pretty bad. That was uh, here in this community, we have Bowling Green State University. And there's a lot of... What's the word I'm looking for? Organizations. Um, organizations. Here in Bowling Green, we have a university, Bowling Green State University. The physics behind billiards has mostly to do with 